I've been shooting heroin for about 25 years. You were 14 when you got into prostitution. Yeah. What you're about to see in this video is 100% real. These people are real. They're not actors. I do not want to promote the use of drugs or anything illegal. I'm just simply trying to tell someone's story through a video. This video is for educational purposes only. I really hope you guys can watch this with sympathy and really feel for these people because addiction is a real thing. It's not a joke. It's not something to take light of. I'm trying to show this in a video and I'm hoping that you guys can, you know, really understand what these people are going through so I don't know what's gonna happen in this video it's gonna be a hundred percent real hundred percent unfiltered and let's see what happens so here we go you know they say the heroin addicts can't be in a relationship well that's not true it's they all lie. It, it's all it's all about the people you know we don't put the drug in between us what we can I have some ice cream cow <laughs> you know what I'm saying uh, that one's coming empty. Have, you, have you tasted that and, and what flavor is that it's called medieval madness it tastes like a sea musketeer oh, made, really? see you know what you did to me <laughs> Obviously, when you first ever heard of heroin, you knew it was a bad thing, right? Of course. <clears throat> I mean, I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, had, I was in jail, and um, I we heard of like a lot of my friends dying from doing it. So, so what made you want to do that? Like, why would you? The nodding, people nodding. Um, nodding. It was that? just a curious thing. I don't know. It was just curious. Like people just looking like they're sleeping. They didn't have nothing. They weren't worried about nothing. And that interested you. Kind of, yeah, I guess because of like, me always being rebellious and doing what I'm not supposed to do. You feel like that was a big regret in your life? That was the worst mistake I could ever done. I don't wish nobody to get in that habit. You know, I see a lot of young kids. There's a young boy that comes over here, and he just really started doing heroin. And he gets mad that when he comes over here, he gets mad when we don't hurry up and fix him, which means hurry up and put the needle in his arm and, and, and you know, put the drug in him. And he really gets an attitude. That, and I told him today, I said, listen, I'm not gonna, I have a conscience and you're not gonna die on my watch because if something was to happen and you OD and we can't save you, that's on my conscience. If you wanna shoot heroin, then you're gonna learn how to do it because I'm not, we're not gonna do it no more for you. Have you ever overdosed? Yeah, I overdosed. All I remember is um, I was with my ex-boyfriend and I got out of the car and I went to the trunk and that's the last thing I remember. They said that I had fell backwards, that a car had pulled up behind us and I was laying on the street and they didn't do anything. The paramedics came, all of a sudden jumping up. Um, they shot me with this stuff called adrenaline. Yeah. And the sheet was at my ankles, and I remember the paramedics saying, Ugh. I was like, Where is, why is there a sheet at my ankles? He was like, uh, another couple seconds, and we was getting ready to call the day. Wow. Like, because I had stopped breathing. Die. I had stopped breathing. You know? What yeah. makes you want to keep doing it, knowing that your life is at it's risk? It's hard, and you know, it's, it's, and I've gone to rehab. I just, it's not, it's easier said than done. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a physical addiction. It's can you, not, I don't, I don't suffer from addiction at all, so I, can you try to, and neither do my viewers, so can you try to walk us through what's it like? Yeah, a pneumonia or flu, you know, when you don't have it, your, your bones ache, your nose run, yeah. you get diarrhea, you know, um, people that snort it, they get a stomach jolt, which means it feels like their stomach is being twisted like this. The flu, 10 times worse than what you really have. And that's just because you don't have this Yeah, surgery. when you wake up in the morning, it's like it's a physical addiction. It's something that we have to have. So we wake up in the morning, I can't even smoke a cigarette because if I don't, I get dope sick, as they call it. And I have to fix in the morning to start my day. When I wake up, I mean, you know, you really only have to fix twice a day, but it, depending on how the drug is or if you're bored, I mean, some days, I might go all day and shoot dope all day long throughout the day. And other days I might only do it twice. It all depends on how good the dope is and how long it stay, keeps me high for. All right, well, what's, what is like one, the craziest thing that you've had to do to get the next fix? Like, have you been? Uh, I turned a date for food stamps because I knew I could turn it into cash. You turned what? Turned a date. What does that I, mean? I had sex for money. But for food stamps, because I know that I could turn it into cash. And then you sold, so you had so sex for money. No, I had sex for the food stamps, food stamps. And I turned it into money. To buy drugs. To buy drugs. And at any point, like when you were doing this, were you ever like, what am I doing? You do what you have to do to get well. It's not something that I, I'm happy about, but it's not something that I'm ashamed to admit either, because I mean, you know, it is what it is. It's an addiction. But like I said, I don't. I, I don't wish that had this happened on anybody, you know, because it's it's bad, and I wish that I never did it, you know. Has this this drug really like ruined your life in a way that you don't have family? Yeah, like well, a, yeah. Do you live on the streets? Yeah, I'm, I'm homeless right now. I had look, I'm 46 years old. I'm on the streets. I have nothing. I don't have nothing. I mean, I I, I survive day by day. You know, I, I can't do anything without, like I said, when I wake up in the morning, I have to fix. Sometimes it stops me from taking care of my responsibilities. You know, I mean, I went to school, I went to college. I did business office administration, but even that was hard because I was a dope fiend and homeless. But I tried to do it just to prove to myself and others that, hey, just because you're dope fiend don't mean you can't do other things. 
thing on your wrist right here, what's that from? This is called the abscess and it came from Puma. I went in the vein, but I missed one. I have to change it anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's about this big. And um, as you can see, it's a cut. But um, they they um, they numbed it and then they took a scalpel and they used to see actually how deep they cut. Yeah. And they cut in and then they, you know, it's just like an abscess, just like a, a, a cyst or something, you know, it had a cord. They cut it and then this like affects like your healing process and stuff like does it make because like this was a month ago Shouldn't this have healed by now? Well, no, you know, I have so many elements so much wrong with me You know that um, I have a bad heart and I have this I have that but the doctors told me you know um, They're scared that if I was to stop I have um, endocarditis which means um, Fat tissue we have four heart valves and I said Sandra this is your heart valve and this is the fat tissue that's going around your heart valve and it's cutting off the circulation from the heroin. If I was to quit or do heroin altogether, that it might send me into cardiac arrest. So potentially the drug that is potentially killing you, if you stop doing it's it, saving me. It, it, it's, it's twisted, but it's saving it's, you. You know, and the number one epidemic in downtown LA amongst IV drug users is not HIV and AIDS, it's hepatitis. Yeah. They call this silent killer because it attacks your liver. You could go to the doctors today and the doctor could say, oh, you have hep C and then you could die tomorrow. Did you, did you do heroin today? Yeah, I did it. When did you do it? About a couple hours ago. So how long does it usually last? Because you seem pretty... It all, you know what, it really, like I said, it all depends. Sometimes I get the heroin and they have to get me up and walk me because they feel like I'm getting ready to go out, like OD. And then I stay high for six or seven hours. And then there's some dope where you can never know I've got high like right now. There's not a heroin addict that I've ever met that, that we, we all regret doing it. How long were you in recovery for? Um, five days. So five days. Well, can you walk me through those five days? What was it like? Um, it was shitty. I had diarrhea. My muscles ached. I was throwing up. I couldn't. I had no appetite for like a month. You know, when you were a little girl, what was your your dream? Like, what did you want to do in life? I wanted to be an occupational therapist. My stepbrother had Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. He was confined to a wheelchair. Um, I don't know what happened. Do you ever think about what your life could be like if you didn't do drugs? I mean, no. So this is normal to you. I didn't say it was no. I didn't say no, and I'm not saying that I'm happy, but I'm content. But if someone gave you the opportunity to try to kick this habit, would you do it, or would I'm you? I'm not ready. You're not ready. I know. I know. You said you you actually have a husband for four years now, right? Well, he's my yeah. He's I'm not official husband, right? But we've been together for four, four years. years. Um, we, he got hit by a car and we exchanged vows in the hospital. But one thing I can say about our relationship is he doesn't put it in front of me, yeah. and he's my backbone. He protects me, and he loves me, but he's not good for me. Yeah. And I know this, he's done, I mean, we're, we're, we're toxic for one another. What would you give them advice if they were in a relationship like that? And, and you know, like you could give them advice now to help them. She's clean, if, if the young lady's clean and the man is getting high, you know, get out of it, run. And a lot of young women, they start doing drugs to get on the same page as their man because they want to be able to identify, they right. want to be there with him and that's not cool. And the man is okay with it because he doesn't love you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he doesn't, if, if a man is getting high and his girlfriend's not, he has no love for her. Yeah. He's not, he doesn't respect her, he doesn't have love for you, he doesn't, and not, none of that. There's so much out there. There's so, this is like, the young kids is like, the ones that are like 18 and younger, like this is their world. Right. It's their time, you know what I mean? And they think that it's cool to smoke weed and do vape. You know, the vape is in, and that's Jake. not... That vape, vape is not in. That's that's all bad. That's worse than narcotics. That's all bad to vape for young kids. Young kids think it's cool to vape. 14, 15 year olds and their parents don't care about them vaping, but that's just as bad as doing a drug. That's worse. That's so addicting. That vaping is so addicting. It's gonna lead to him and weed, and then if you, if you already do weed, it's gonna lead to alcohol, and that shit is not cool. There's more out there than, than vaping and So it's drugs. a gateway, basically. I mean, exactly. You know, the the parents think, oh, yeah, you can vape because at least you're not smoking cigarettes. And what do you think they're doing? Because you can put crystal in vape. You can put weed in you can put You can put crystal in vapors. You can put weed in vape. I mean, mom and dad don't know what they're doing, and the kids are think they're slick, but, I, you know, I know what's going on. Okay, guys, so a lot of information is coming out of this, and I know you guys are probably just as interested as I am, so I'm going to actually stop this video right now and maybe make a part two of this video so we can really get all the information we want to hear because I don't want to post a 45-minute video. I want to make them short, and I want to make them you guys to enjoy them. So we're going to stop this video, and we're going to come back and give you another part of this video. So thank you for watching this part. If you enjoyed it, please smash the thumbs up button, share it.
and I'll see you guys maybe tomorrow or the next day with a part two. Awesome. survivors of the Hillside Strangler. What's that? The Hillside Strangler. Make sure you guys check out yesterday's video and also make sure you hit that subscribe button right now and turn on post notifications so you never miss a post. Follow me on my other social medias and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.